I get kind of the behind the scenes action as it unfolded. All right, so you're out there, first call for prejudgment. Uh, your initial response when you see, now obviously you guys are in the back, you're in the pump up room. Did anybody catch your eyes, potential? This guy could be a problem for me here today. Oh, uh, you know, I, I looked around. I know when you're in the moment backstage, uh, things don't always appear to be clear as they seem. Guys that are look, uh, you know, better than they, than they may look under the stage lighting. So I try not to really focus on, on that. I, I did see, uh, I did see Hottie walk by. I felt like, okay, Hottie's on. It looked like uh, Dexter was, was pretty much on. I actually see he was pretty good Dex. But uh, he also looked real flat. Uh, but uh, I just, I, I knew, I knew William, you know, it looked like his condition was good, but for some reason, his first perception looked a little small, smaller to me. Maybe not his full. My goal was uh, to come in and be uh, pre-judging and be as full as possible because I thought Steve was going to work this down. And I wanted to be able to go out the onslaught and not, not look uh, totally like a mess after. But uh, when we, we did that, we actually probably came in a little too full. I actually probably had some food in my belly that I didn't eat. But uh, we were able to come out with a, a really, really full package. And I knew uh, from the inside that Roly was uh, struggling with kind of being a little flat. So I don't, even, I don't know what uh, he was going to have to do to carve up and bring that full look. But I know he may not have had an impact on stage that, uh, that he would normally have if he was uh, you know, freely filled out. So uh, being on stage, I just had confidence that I need to do exactly what I need to do to present myself uh, in a dominant fashion on stage. I knew uh, I was going to play the game with the line, and I would have to keep an eye on him on a peripheral vision to make sure he just wasn't three feet in front of me. So, uh, <laughs> that kid picked it up quick, didn't he? Yeah, I have watched him uh, over the years uh, on stage, and he has a very, very uh, good stage game. And if, you, and if you're not aware of it, you, uh, you, you'll be a step way behind him, and he'll be way in front of you. Now, Brandon, <laughs> the, the, while we got our audience here, uh, talk about stage game. Uh, you know, that's an insider term that we use that, that they're not really privy to, but, um, you know, a lot of people are looking at, well, what can you do on stage in a bodybuilding competition, you know, but uh, talk about stage game. Like, what, what goes on up there? What, what are some of these little tricks and things that these guys do to try to get one up on him? Well, you know, we got the line, we got the line there that's supposed to, everybody's supposed to stand on. And, you know, uh, guys appear bigger when they're closer uh, to the camera or to your eye. And uh, that's why some of these photos, when you see guys, uh, I, I remember the, uh, what's that, that, when he competed against Nathan, a lot of times he looked like he was way bigger than Nathan because he was just a little ahead in front of him. So, uh, unless you're really, really close to the guy, you can't see that overlap. So, with, with the stage game, it's, uh, it's a matter of just trying to get that edge, hopefully the light is good up front, and the guys continue to kind of move forward and kind of get that, get that edge in there, or they're uh, posing late to get that maybe that little shuffle step in. So, uh, you, you know, you kind of have to time yourself, you got to time your poses, you can't get a rush, and you, you got to watch the guys to make sure they're not pulling tricks. And, uh, and then I wanted the judges to also know and, and this is what was going on. I, mean, I was aware of it. And, um, you know, of course, you can't you can communicate to some guys, but unfortunately, some guys you can't communicate to. So, uh, I think William was out there calling me a cheater. Uh, because he, 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 he was in between. He didn't see what Hottie was doing, so he was just calling me a cheater. So I was like, I was like, I had to explain to him later and show pictures. I was like, man, bro, uh, we, we, we just playing a game, you know? And so they called us, until they uh, put us back in place, you gotta play a game if you wanna win. So uh, it's, it's all about stage dominance and then not letting anybody get the edge on you uh, psychologically or, or physically. And uh, so, well, well, Dexter is one of those master communicators on stage uh, for many years now. Uh, you know, obviously, we all know Dexter, the veteran of the group, 20 straight Olympias, 29 victories, uh, you know, the, the Hall of Famer for sure. Uh, but that's certainly, he can talk some game out there, can he? Yeah, a lot of times you guys don't really see what goes on when we turn around. And uh, when we turn around, a lot of times we communicate with each other. We can talk a lot of junk and a lot of trash. So that's it, you know, when we're switching up in the line, he gives you that stare. You know, like he got the best of you. And you know, a lot of times, you know, it's just fun, but you know, it's competition. So 
you know, if any guy got any uh, question in his mind, it can, it, can, it can really affect you. It can affect you, delay you. I know when I was putting my hands out there uh, to maybe keep hiding back behind the line, every time he got in my hands, that would uh, give him a, uh, he would be thrown off. And, he, and then by the time it's time to pose, he would be able to step up. So I, I was trying to keep it in bay that way at first until the finals, of course. He, uh, he had Hani yell at him, come on, step up, step up, step up. <laughs> So, it's a lot going on up there, but, uh, you know, maybe you guys are not aware of, but it's, it's a battle, you know, you gotta be hungry, you gotta be fighting, and uh, you gotta show the judges that, you know, you wanna win the title, and, and until they say you've done too much, and they, they correct you, you, you gotta do what you gotta do to show that you, you really want that position. Yeah, Big Steve's not one of the get stuff to go too much, as, as you all hear, he's uh, not shy in the microphone, so, you know. The words no elbows is gonna come out from Steve real quick. And guys take a step and uh, you know, he, he keeps order up on that stage. So you gotta get away with as much as you can while you can do it. Yeah, you notice in some of the pictures that, you know, when I did have to pose uh, with Heidi in front of me, I would make sure I, I stood where you could see him overlap. You could oh, he overlapped me literally, so you know he was in front of me by the pictures, because you know, the fans would be like, oh, you know, it, he better, it, they'll argue based on photos when they were there. So you, you gotta make it a point to where, you know, you, 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 you expose in the game that is being played, uh, so you know, you don't, you're not playing. So uh, I, I wanted to come in and be competitive, and I had my game plan set, and I, I, I pretty much anticipated what was going to happen before it happened. You know, uh, pictures and video are obviously much different. Uh, how many people are here for the first time at the Olympia this year? Now, would you guys say that there's a vast difference between seeing it live and seeing pictures and video online? <laughs> Uh, you know, we, we, we were just talking about this earlier actually at breakfast, and um, it's interesting because you get a lot of people online, Giles, you know this, a lot of people, and um, you know, everybody's a fan, I mean obviously fans have their favorites, of course, uh, and that's fine, they can tell the line and all that, but you see some adamant people, you know, some passionate people out there, you know, this judging sucks, you know, this is bullshit, this is political, this was this, this was that, um, and we get all that, you know, but the bottom line is it is different. When you're in, 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 uh, at a competition live, you see it up there, the closer you are, the more different it is. Uh, it's a different show, you know, between where the judges are, you know, where the VIP people are, where the people are row 50, whether you're watching it at home, online, on, on the, uh, you know, the live webcast, it can be a totally different looking show. So I'm glad, for those of you here for the first time, I'm glad you guys are able to come out here and get that Olympia experience. Uh, then you go back and tell people, and they say, ah, oh, this guy got screwed, he should have been here. You go, ah, wait a minute, no. I was there, and I saw Brandon cheating and moving on top of the line. <laughs> That's why he won. Yeah, so, uh, never cross the line, Brandon. Hey, hey, hey. You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, I, I wouldn't cross the line, nobody else did. I'd stand back there, because I know I could present myself well, but I, I, I'd be down if I let somebody just kind of step up on me and uh, appear to be somebody who's not. You know, <laughs> bottom line is you got the sand on my friend. That's right. All right. Chris Bumstead. Is all that trash talking going on with you guys, with the classic physique guys? You guys keep it classy. We mainly keep it a little more classy. <laughs> I think people, it's a much younger division, so I think there's a lot of heat that's been built up over the years in the Open, which I'm sure give us some time, 10, 15 years down the road, if we've all been on stage a long time, come up together, we'll have a lot more heat. But it's definitely quiet on stage, I don't think I heard anything, but you can feel, you can feel heat for sure. I know me and Brian bumped elbows a few times, and Steve, like you said, told us to get the hell back in line, and made us move back, but it's not so much talking, it's just more of like a presence. Don't look each other in the eyes backstage, just kind of locked in, you can just feel it. Now, obviously you saw Brian at some point backstage for the first time. Uh, and you had your fair support last year, I mean, yeah, your fair share. Uh, a lot of people thought you should have won last year. Uh, and obviously it didn't go your way, but it went your way this year. But obviously you and Brian, you know, very competitive uh, against each other. The entire class is very competitive, but you two in particular. But two completely different physiques. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the beauty of classic physique is it allows us to display so many different forms of physiques up there on the stage, different heights and weights. And you can really just, it makes you 
present your physique in a way where you have to show your throwing points. Brian obviously is a much shorter, kind of smaller body build than me, but his stage presence is really good posing is amazing. He's got an insane back, brings an insane level of conditioning, and it allows him to kind of push everyone behind him a little bit. Whereas I'm a bigger guy, a little bit taller, I guess. I personally say more classic lines, but you know that's obviously all up to the viewer's discretion. But it's, it's the classic division. It's why it's so interesting in my opinion. It's, I'm so grateful to be part of it. It just allows us to bring so many different looks. Now, obviously you're in a position of the winner now. You automatically qualify for next year's competition. Uh, this is obviously put you in a different spot where you don't have to compete throughout the year. So will we see you competing at any show throughout the year, or do you sit back as the champ Kind of take that time, make improvements, you know, train. Obviously, a lot of guys make uh, appearances, you know, all over the world. Um, what's your plan? To be completely honest, for the last two, three years, I haven't thought past this moment of chasing this. Since my first Olympia, the only goal ever was get that title, and I haven't thought past it today since then. So right now, I'm still soaking in the victory, and I haven't. I, like I said, in the past few years, I haven't thought past yesterday, so we locked it down. I got what I've been working for, and I guess now it's time to plan ahead. Nice thing is with the Olympia, obviously being in September, is you can pretty much take the rest of the year and just be the champ. Go out there, you know, wave, shake hands, kiss babies, you know, do everything that we got to do as, as uh, uh, bodybuilders and, of course, as champions at that. Uh, an Olympian champion puts you in a whole different perspective. So uh, the nice thing is you get a chance to kind of just ride that out now and not really have to make a decision until next year whether you feel like competing or, if, like I said, you can take your time and, and uh, you know, I know you were battling some injuries uh, this past year. So uh, hopefully that puts you in a better spot. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they, they just changed the rules this year too, right? Where you go top five doesn't qualify. Uh, that's correct. We, we make changes to the qualification system. so. Winners will all qualify now for the Olympia for 2020. So if you win a pro league show, you win, you're in, uh, in, in into the Olympia. Uh, so the yeah, so last year, top five pre qualified this year only the winner does. So that's correct. Right. Three years I've been lucky enough. So I've taken the entire year off to prepare for it. And it's all really good. My body team did it. Like you said, I've had a few injuries. I actually tore my hamstring like three weeks out from this Olympia. I've had a hernia. Uh, 12 weeks out, which I got repaired, and then it burst open again in the middle. So I got a few things I got to take care of, and I'm just going to give my body a little bit of rest right now, and hopefully come back bigger, better, stronger next time. Well, I suggest you and Whitney Jones never train together. <laughs> <laughs> now, Raymond, you guys were on points, if I'm not mistaken, correct? To qualify for this Olympia, so you had to have excellent points. Uh, to actually get in the Olympics. So you weren't out, you went, you were in scenario. So you had to go out and compete. Well, um, no, actually, I was requalified. You were already requalified. I still did shows because, like I said before, uh, well, that's just the way I did it. I uh, feel like the only way I can prepare better is actually like, in game. Should it um, practice all you can, but you can't really, you can't simulate how to like, hit your feet. And that's the thing, you, know, you, you can't recreate being on stage. Uh, a lot of athletes try to do it, you know, you have a guest appearance or something somewhere, and you say, wow, you know, we're going to go through the motions of this, like it's a competition. It, it doesn't work. You can't recreate getting ready for competition. It doesn't work. Not at all. Um, but so, like, you know, being in this position now, uh, I'm not, it hasn't all sunk in, so I don't know what it meant, but I'm out of pressure. <laughs> So it feels good. That's the beauty of being a champ is you don't have to make a decision. So you can ride it out, like I said, make appearances, uh, get out there in the circuit. Uh, that if you feel like competing, some some athletes feel like they need to compete throughout the year to keep sharp. Yeah, um, there's one. There's one in uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, one in the past couple years. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, Pittsburgh's been good for you. Uh, that's good. Nice to have before you. Yeah, you know, because I mean, I, I love competing. I've done. Minimum four or five shows over the past few seasons. Uh, I get kind of bored. I think I'm Brett, but I'm one of those guys. But uh, I think to retain the title and continue to keep it for years to come, like, it's going to take time and repair, recovery, and key improvement. And that's going to take a lot of strategic plans moving forward. So my coach, Bill Moore, and my support system will figure it out for sure. All right. You can clap now. That's all right. Thank you.
All right, we're going to go to our audience for some questions for our champs. Uh, we usually kind of get short change at the end of the time, so I want to kind of push this forward a little bit where you guys get an opportunity uh, to ask the champs some questions that you'd like. Anybody got a question for anybody? Yes, you in the front row, sir. Um, first, congratulations to the champions for the first place. My question is to Kamel and uh, Brandon. When first uh, Henry Chopin didn't get the visa, and then got the visa, and then he came to the States, and then he did make his mind up whether he will compete in the Open Air or in the 212. How were you prepared mentally for this showdown? And what difference did it make? when he competed in the Open or in the 212. Uh, let's go with Kamal first. So Kamal, when you heard that uh, Hadi was, uh, uh, for those who don't know, the Hadi Chupan from Iran qualified in both divisions. Uh, this doesn't happen a lot, but these guys can actually, and girls, can go in different divisions if they wish. Uh, he happened to win a men's Open show and he won a Pro 212, so he qualified for either one. Now you cannot compete in multiple competitions at their multiple divisions in the same competition. You can't cross over. So he had to pick one or the other. So there was a lot of speculation when he finally got the, the green light to come here to the USA, uh, whether he was going to go into 212 or the Open. So you heard Heidi Chupan was coming. Come on, did you say, uh, great, bring him on, or okay, great, you the Open. I beat him before. Nice. Yeah, I've been through about three times before. I won when I was the like, world champion. Um, I have been world champion. It's the last actually time I beat him, 2013, at the um, Oracle I am the world champion. Now that's six years ago, so he's clearly made some improvements since then. Yeah, big time. There's some things you can make improvement, and there's some big things you can make a cheat. So, you know what he's talking about. It's okay. <laughs> It's been seen to a lot of people. But it's okay. It's, it, the guy has done a lot of improvement, doesn't And I really definitely want him to be to do the good one. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to be hard for him because he can't wait. Yeah. When we used to do the world champion as an amateur, he used to drop his weight before he could be in the ring. That's 100 percent And ask him if he knows that. And ask his manager team, and they know that. It's not that said that whatever. Like I'm better. No, he's a really nice bodybuilder. He's got great physique. He's got the opportunity, he's a lot younger than me. But when we're talking about like lines and statues and bodies all over, I think some people they could, they could, they could see that. All right, come on, I've always admired your confidence. It's, it's, no, it's good. I, I, mean, I don't mean that facetiously. Come on. You've been around the block, you've been around a long time. But, so you didn't fear the competition. You said, how do you want to go to 212? Let him come. I really, really want him to be at the 212. That's what I said. I want him to be at the 212. If he beats me, it's fair enough. So he's back to him. And it's a good, good thing. But, and then he would show like, yes, he's improved. I improved as well. It's it's not like, I don't know, but it's, I, I would really didn't bother me at all. It's, it's a different game at 212, isn't it? I mean, when you have to drop that weight to make it, a lot of things get exposed. Uh, it's not easy to make that weight. He was probably, I'm just guessing, he'd probably be in the 220s, I would say, this competition ran. So, probably in the mid 220s. So, uh, dropping another 10 pounds, things change, don't they? Big time, man. There is like, there's a big, big points over there okay. in the body. So, when you're trying to even go down, maybe some guys don't, they don't really agree with me, but this is by me, what we know. I think we know a little bit about it. We know what we're talking about. So, this is what we, we can see, but we never ever stood in no, never. Yeah.